Hello, Homestead. Please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please stay standing for a moment of silence. Coming up on today's episode of HU Dust and Dab, you'll learn about the cafeteria workers who help prepare your lunches each and every day. Assistant Principal Mr. Kintz is first up in our four-part series of learning more about Homestead's assistant principals, created by reporter Andre Setlever. Last week at the chapel kicked off Fuse, reporter Cora Shaw was on scene to learn what it is and how Homestead kids can get involved. I'm Ashton Ackman. Coming up on the Locker Report, Caleb Wood and I give you an update on all things HHS sports, including a look at our Homestead girls soccer team. Plus, the student section leaders are in with the theme for tonight's game. Alex Peters is in with the new Tech Talk, teaching you all about printing at Homestead. And Drew Persinger is in with his weather segment, The Drew Point. We'll bring you all of those stories and more coming up on HHS In Depth for Friday, September 6th. Hello Homestead, I'm Nisha Lalaria. And I'm Carly Flanagan. Welcome to today's episode of HHS In Depth. We begin today's show with a story over the people behind the scenes in the cafeteria who make it possible to serve a high school full of students lunch each day. Reporter Jenna Lane brings you the story to give you a better understanding of how everything works on a daily basis. I took a trip down to Homestead's Kitchens to find out more about what our food services staff members do. Looking behind the scenes, we'll discover what working a day in food services looks like for various employees. It's different every day. So our job is just a series of interruptions. Uh, and we, we have a hard deadline of getting food ready when you guys walk in the door. So it can get crazy here at times, but our goal is to, you know, serve great food to you guys. And so, like I said, our, our job is different every single day. A uh, typical day here for me as the manager, I have my normal routine, but usually I fill in for anybody that's not here. If one of the 30 some ladies calls in sick or their child's sick and they can't come to work, then I have to fill in. So I have to know everybody's position and be able to fill in at a moment's notice. Well, I come in every day and help prep the pizzas fresh. And then I run the line with the cash register and any serving that needs to be done. The many choices for lunch here at Homestead are often overlooked by students. I'm not sure everybody realizes how many options we really do have. I think if the kids would see everything that we have, they would be surprised. I don't know if people really realize that there's 10 different lines here that we serve, and there's different options every day for those 10 lines. There's choices here, and that the food quality here is much better than it was when I was a student coming through the school system. There are many great aspects to working in food services, but there are a few that really stand out to the employees. The kids. I love the kids. They make my day. I love them coming in when they're freshmen, but when they leave as seniors, I get sad. Just the kids. Just being around the kids every day. And I find joy in providing great meals. Being around the kids and let, having them enjoy our food is the number one thing. Make sure to be respectful and thank the food service staff members for their hard work. Reporting for HHS In Depth, I'm Jenna Lane. Speaking of lunch, the cafeteria staff stopped serving ice cream five minutes before the dismissal of each lunch mod. So if you want ice cream, be sure to get it early. Juniors and seniors, the following colleges will be visiting Homestead. If you would like to attend a meeting, you must sign up in student services and get your pass at least one day prior to the visit. Wednesday, September 11th, IU, and Thursday, September 12th, Huntington University and St. Mary's College. Lost and found items are located on the tables outside of the discipline office in the 1012 building. See Mrs. Godfrey in discipline for valuable items such as jewelry, keys, electronics, and designer clothes. 
All items not picked up by the end of the day today will be donated. Get out to the next environmental club on Monday in Mrs. Merkling's room, room 206. You'll meet in the classroom, but dress appropriately as they plan to go to the environmental center after a brief in-class meeting if the weather allows. They hope to see you there on Monday at 245 in room 206. The K-pop club meets today after school in room 924 until 415. Do you like discussing politics and want to make new friends? Go out to the Young Progressives meeting after school today in room 614. All are welcome to join the discussion and eat snacks. Today starts part one of a four-part series where reporter Andre Santlover gets to know Homestead's assistant principals better. Up first in today's installment is a look at Mr. Kintz, where you'll learn about his professional background before becoming Homestead's assistant principal. Many students at Homestead see administrators walking throughout the school yet do not know what they do. I got to meet with Mr. Kintz in the discipline office to learn more of what he does. My job responsibilities in particular in regards, in regards to discipline I handle disciplinary issues for grades 10 through 12, but they're not specifically attached to attendance. So I don't handle attendance related disciplines such as tardies or for truancies. It can be stressful at times, but it's also a heck of a lot of fun. Um, I love creating relationships with teenagers. Mr. Kintz has an interesting story in which he tells about not planning on becoming a principal. I'm a little bit different than most of the other administrators that I work with here and or that I find that work for other schools. My background was in education, however, I had no intent of becoming a teacher or even an administrator at that point when I first graduated from college. Started substitute teaching, it was pretty hard to get uh, a job in the teaching field at that time. You're talking about the early 90s. At one point, my mom mentioned to me, she's like, you know, why don't you go over to Ohio? My mom grew up in Van Wert in an orphanage. I went over there at the time to apply. They said, thanks, but no, no thanks, we're not hiring. However, there's a boys' school down the road by the name of Star Commonwealth which was a boys' school for juvenile sex offenders. They did have openings. I applied and found myself working there for about a year. So a job opened up back here at what was called the Oldwood Youth Center. Ended up working my way up into administration there. Um, that made way for some really good connections with the different school systems. And so after doing that for about two or three years, there was a position opened up here at Homestead as a dean. The rest was kind of history. I took the position and worked my way into an assistant principal position. As the school year is still near the beginning, he urges the new students to join in activities. The sky is the limit here. Um, there are so many different clubs and activities, and all of these groups are so welcoming. Join one, find something that you like to do. There's going to be some club out there that you can join because there's literally tens of clubs that are out there that our kids have created and or have founded new clubs because each and every year we'll have students that will, will come in and they'll have no ideas and we're very welcoming of that. So along with all our extra and co-curriculars that we have. The clubs are phenomenal, our extracurriculars, co-curriculars, outstanding. Find something to do, get attached. If you see Mr. Kintz in the halls, be sure to say hello. Reporting for HHS In Depth, I'm Andre Sentliver. The Dungeons and Dragons Club will meet today in the cafeteria annex until 4.30. Spanish Club will meet after school Thursday in Senor Peeper's class to vote for this year's officers and celebrate the beginning of the year with ice cream. Students need to hand in their pink permission forms and $5 dues to vote for this year's officers. Interested in being a part of creative arts community here at Homestead? Join Art Lab, a division of the Homestead Visual Arts Department. Did you miss the informational meeting? No problem. Ask any art teacher to add you by email to their Canvas page. The first Art Lab will be on Thursday, September 19th after school from 2.45 to 3.45. They'll be hosting guest artist Jared Tobias. He will discuss his role in the Fort Wayne street art scene and lead students in a stenciling and spray paint workshop. Spaces are limited, so sign up to attend this workshop on the Art Lab Canvas page. In Proven Drama Club will be having its first meeting on Monday, September 9th. If you love acting, comedy, or snacks, come to room 904 after school for all three from 2.45 to 3.30. Young Americans for Freedom is back this school year, starting on Tuesday, September 17th in room 718. Stop in after school if you like politics, current events, or a good conversation with your peers. All political viewpoints are welcome, and they typically have snacks. Physics Club will meet next Monday after school in room 207. Go learn about physics through fun and interesting labs and demonstrations. The Acoustic Music Club meets this and every Friday after school in room 117. All talent levels are welcome to attend. Last week kicked off Fuse at the Chapel and reporter Cora Shaw caught up with its organizer to see what goes on at this weekly event for Homestead students. Recently, I went out to the chapel to learn more about their high school ministry Fused. Last Thursday, they had a kickoff for the upcoming school year. Fused is a community of high school students at the chapel. We do lots of different things, whether it be weekly meetings where we're playing games, eating food, having some great discussions about life and about the Bible. We also are a community of high school students that seeks to believe, grow, serve, and change our world. 
So kickoff is normally our big fall event. It's an opportunity to kind of get the word out about what we're doing, to have a lot of fun. It's an opportunity just to invite people. This year we're doing a car bash as well as some other fun activities and having some food trucks come out for a kickoff. One of the main highlights of the kickoff was a car bash fundraiser for an upcoming Haiti missions trip. A car bash is when we bring a old broken up car and we take all the glass out of it and we bring it here and we let people swing a sledgehammer at it. So there is a charge for the car bash. It's $1 for five swings with a sledgehammer on this car. The money is going towards Haiti. Uh, we've been going down to Haiti for years and years. We've been taking high school students down there. And this year we've kind of adopted an orphanage there that has uh, no beds for approximately 25 kids. So we are gonna be raising money to go and build bunk beds for them this spring over spring break. Overall, the kickoff was a success, and students had a great time connecting with other high school students outside of school. I loved the car bash and the hay rides. They were so much fun. The hay rides, we just got to hang out and talk to each other, but also like doing something together. And the car bash was a lot of fun, and we raised a lot of money for Haiti. Fuse meets every Thursday at the chapel from 7 to 8.30. Reporting for HHS In Depth, I'm Cora Shaw. Biomedical Science Club will hold meetings once a month each school year. Meetings will consist of guest speakers from various biomedical science careers. They will hold a brief call-out meeting for anyone interested in joining this club next Wednesday, September 11th from 2.45 to 3 o'clock in room 215. Snacks will be provided. Questions, email Mrs. Behrens or see her in room 215. Attention freshmen, would you like to work with the HHS student government next year? Please consider running for student government positions as a way to get involved and make a difference at your school. Petitions are available for Mrs. Connerly in the Academy office or for Mrs. Moss in room 723. Petitions are due by Friday, September 13th, so hurry and pick up yours today. The time for class jewelry orders is here. Jostens will be in the cafeteria on Wednesday, September 11th to take orders. You can design your custom jewelry at jostens.com. Extra information and design packets are available in student services. Film club is back. Go join them for food, fellowship, and great films every Tuesday after school in Mrs. Ricker's room, room 113, starting Tuesday, September 16th. Basket Weaving Club will have the first meeting of the year on Thursday, September 12th in Mrs. Ricker's room, room 204. No experience is necessary as they will be making a fun fall basket. They hope to see you there. It's time for this week's installment of The Locker Report with Ashton Hackman and Caleb Wood. This week, you'll get caught up with the number five ranked girls soccer team. Hello Homestead, I'm Ashton Ackman and welcome into another edition of The Locker Report. This week we get caught up with the team shooting for a state title this year after winning a runner-up title last year. Fresh off their blowout win against Marion on Tuesday, we get caught up with the Homestead Girls Soccer Team, your team of the week. The Homestead Girls Soccer Team is kicking it into action this season, dominating the competition and having a high ranking in the state. So far the season's gone really well. We've played some strong competition early but it's been a good test for us. Lately we've had to play like some teams that aren't really good so we've kind of just blown them out but hopefully we play some stronger competition and get to see where we're at in the season. The season has been good. We won mostly all of our games, only lost two this season, but overall a good season. After coming up short to a state title last year and dominating the regular season so far this year, the team has their eyes set on one goal. The team goal this season is to definitely win sectionals and then hopefully make it all the way back to state. We really want to be able to top off what we did last year. To um, win sectionals, regionals, semi-state, and make it back to state again. Even with the loss of several seniors this season, the team hopes that new and stronger chemistry will help them get that state title. We're all a lot more closer than we are. We're making sure that everyone is happy, everyone has a place on the team, and everyone feels welcome. I'd say the biggest thing that we've changed from last year is our team chemistry on the field. We can definitely connect passes more and just like understand what's going through each other's minds. Despite putting in a lot of hard work through practices and games, the team still shares many moments together both on and off the field. My favorite memory would have to be beating Carmel because it was just exciting to beat them after we lost to them in state, which was a pretty monumental moment. My favorite memory would have to be when we played Penn and after we were having a team dinner with them and then we had a team riff off against Penn and it was a lot of fun. Probably just making fun of Link all day, every day at practice. <laughs> um, our favorite memory is beating Carmel 3-1. You can catch the Lady Spartans in action tomorrow at Northridge. 
And now here's sports reporter Caleb Wood with a look at this past week in Homestead Athletics. Hello Homestead, I'm sports reporter Caleb Wood and here's a look at what happened this past week in Homestead Athletics. The Spartan football team had a near shutout win over Concordia last Friday with a final score of 35-6. With Concordia scoring their only points in the final seconds of the game, the Spartans are now 2-0. Touchdowns were scored by Griffin Little, Jake Archbold and two rushing touchdowns over 50 yards by Braden Hardwick. The cross-country team headed up to the Penn Invite last weekend. The boys' varsity placed first, led by Jared Neff in first, Keegan Stuckey in third, Donnie McArdle in fourth, and Ethan Bates in tenth place. The girls' varsity placed third, with Amelia Faber in second and Julia Dvorak in third. The boys travel to Terre Haute for the state preview meet tomorrow, and the girls are in action at Marion. The girls' soccer team won 7-0 against Marion on Tuesday. Good luck to them as they face Northridge tomorrow, and to the boys as they face the Carroll Chargers. The boys' tennis team had another 5-0 win this week against Canterbury. Good luck to them as they face our rivals up north, Carroll, tomorrow. The girls' golf team defeated Bishop Dwinger on Wednesday at Coyote Creek, led by Maddie DeBeja with 37. And finally, the Homestead Volleyball team won all three games against Snyder on Tuesday. They head up to the Warsaw Invite tomorrow. That was a look at this week in Spartan Athletics. For The Locker Report, I'm Caleb Wood. And now here are the student section leaders with the theme for tonight's home game against Bishop Lures. Home game this Friday, USA theme. Red, white, blue. Let's go! But it's like I cannot change in the Finally, good luck to all Spartan athletes in action this weekend. The volleyball team takes on Warsaw. Boys Cross Country heads to the state preview in Terre Haute. Girls Cross Country in Marion. Boys Tennis travels up north to face Carroll. Girls Soccer at Northridge High School. Boys Soccer at Carroll. And Girls Golf is in action at Westfield. That's all for this edition of The Locker Report. I'm Ashton Ackman. Have a great weekend. And now back in for another tech lesson. Here's Alex Peters with Tech Talk, this week teaching you how to print properly. Hey there, welcome to Tech Talk, where you can learn tips about your tech. I'm Alex Peters. This week I'll be going over how to print at school. Though it may seem simple, there are a few tips that you can use to make sure you get that essay turned in on time. The first thing you should do before you start printing is to figure out the closest printer to your room. If you have to print frequently in a certain class, make sure you remember the printer closest to that room. The next thing you should do before printing is determine if you need color or if black and white will suffice. Remember that most printers around the school will only print in black and white. Just print as you normally would for these printers. If you absolutely need color for your print, you'll have to use the Follow Me printer. This can be a bit confusing, so remember these steps if you need to print there. The Follow Me printer option doesn't just mean one printer. If you print to Follow Me, you can go to any Follow Me printer around the school, such as near the cafeteria or in the media center. Once you hit print, just find the closest Follow Me printer and follow these steps. Type in your ID and password as you would to log into your computer. Make sure the bottom field reads this. If it doesn't, enter it again, otherwise the printer won't work. Once logged in, just select the document name that you want to print and start printing. When you're done, make sure to log out. And that's it. That's all you need to know to make printing go smoothly at school. Make sure to let me know if there's anything you'd like me to cover by emailing me at techtalkhhs at gmail.com or just send me a message on Instagram at peters underscore underscore alex. Be sure to tune in next time where I show you how to keep your electronics safe and secure at school. I'm Alex Peters. See you next time. And now it's time to find out about this weekend's weather forecast with our weatherman, Drew Persinger. Here's the Drew Point.
Hey fellas, welcome to the Drew Point. I'm doing something different. I've gotta go quick, I gotta go speedy. I'm gonna see how fast I can do this weather because I'm gonna go quick, I'm gonna go speedy. Let's go. Tonight it's gonna be partly cloudy with a temperature of 57 degrees. And then on Saturday, we're looking at sunny skies with a high of 74 and low of 55. And then on Sunday, it's gonna be partly cloudy again with a high of 68 and low of 56. Whew, oh man. That was wacky, that was exhausting. I'm tired from doing all that weather so fast. I think I gotta have to take a break, drink some water, and you know, hydrate myself. So, I'll see you next week. I'm Drew Persinger, see ya Homestead. Well that wraps up today's edition of HS In Depth. I'm Nisha Lalaria. And I'm Carly Flanagan. Thank you for watching today. Be sure to follow us on social media for behind the scenes clips and digital exclusives. Today we leave you with a song you can catch on Homestead's radio station, The Point 91 FM. Have a great weekend and we'll see you again next week.